All right, welcome back. Come on in, we're just getting started here. Say hi, the camera, you're on YouTube, all right. All right, so what I was talking about was, I guess we can say hidden resistance. It's not really hidden, it's just you didn't notice it. And now that you understand Ohm's law, you do, we'll talk about a little bit more, is that you can start finding resistance where there wasn't any. So here you got a battery in your car, right? And you go to start your car and sometimes it doesn't work. Um, you know, and the, and as you turn the key, the lights kind of get the lights on, they sort of dim at the same time, you know what I'm talking about, and a little click, click, click. And you're like, why well, is a brand new battery? You know, what the heck? And so you get out and, you know, open the hood and, and kind of grab the cables and, you know, maybe twist them and try it again and everything works, right? Well, you had a bunch of resistance between that cable that goes over this and the post. And so if you would have with that, that uh, what do you want to call it? the cable that goes on the post, if you would have taken an ohmmeter and you would have put it between this post right here and the cable that went around it and measured that resistance, it would have been almost nothing, right? So you'd say, well, there's no resistance there, so it's good contact. I'm getting continuity. Everybody follow? Mm -hmm. All right, but take it a step further, because now you know electricity, now you put it on volts, right? And you put it between here and here, and you should read? Nah, it's difference of potential. So there's no voltage drop, should be no voltage drop. So you get nothing. You tell your buddy, go ahead and hit the starter. Now the starter's got you know, a couple hundred amps. 100 amps wants to uh, pull, uh, depending on the starter, but let's just say, you know, a couple hundred. So now you got a couple hundred amps running through this. Now when you get a bunch of current flow, you start to measure and you get like, oh, half a volt drop. And if you stop and think about that, if it's a half a volt at 100 amps, it's a lot of resistance. You know, you suddenly start seeing resistance show up where you did before. So that goes back to what I was talking about. You know, if I said, oh, you know, my battery's way in the back and you know, and it's typical with uh, airplanes like that, you hit the starter, and if it's on a compression stroke, you see the propeller kind of stop, and you gotta let up off the starter, and then hit it again, and it goes past that compression stroke, and it's like, is your airplane broke? No, it's just the batteries in the back. You know, that's the way they, where they operate. Well, you know, you take the cable out, you know, and you're like, well, cable says zero ohms, man. There's nothing wrong with this, but yet you figure the length of the cable, it is going to have some resistance. You can have each one of the little connectors that's going to have some resistance. And it's just not really enough to measure uh, with an ohmmeter. But, man, you start running big current through there, you're going to see some big voltage drops. What, what's the primary reason why you're not going to see, uh, like, can you dumb it down? Like, why, why when you don't have current flow, uh, is it just because of the, the, the voltage that's present in the voltmeter is just not adequate enough? Yeah. To, okay. Yep. Okay. And so you're, you're seeing, or if you see, you know, like with a, an analog meter, you know, you're seeing just very minor amounts of, of resistance. You're like, ah, it's fine. It would be fine if it was just a little tiny light bulb, but it's not fine when you run big amounts of current through. It adds up very quickly. So, all right, so a conductor, I don't know what got me off on that one, but conductor has less than half the allowable valence electrons. Uh, that is because the outer electrons are loosely held. Are loosely held. Uh, let's look at some. So here are some examples of of good conductors, which are copper. copper, silver, and gold. So let's do copper. Copper. Um, copper has 29 electrons. And if we were to look up how it was made, of course we'd have the you know, little 
center right there. So the first, let's do it in this color. So the first ring would have how many electrons? Two. Yeah, the most it can have is two, and this one does in fact have two. Can I just put a number two there? That's me easier. All right, and then we have a, another ring. How many electrons are there? Eight. Can have up to eight, and this one does in fact have eight. All right, so we've got a third ring. Most we can have is 18, 18 and this one has 18. 18. And last ring for this one can have what, 64, I think? 32. 32, I missed count. Okay, this one only has one. So is that more or less than the how than half? Less. Less, and so that makes a pretty good conductor right there, the way it's made. All right, so let's look at what's my next on here? Silver. Silver has 47 electrons. And I'm going to write this as different. And they are first ring is two, second ring is eight, uh, third ring is 18, then a Another one at 18, so it didn't fill it up, but we're going to go to yet another ring where it only has one, where it would be, I think, that one's 64, right? One, two, three, four, five, ooh. Fifty, yeah, I'm just doing math in my head, 50. Because 25, it's five squared, 25 times two is 50. And Maybe I was doing, yes, I was just <laughs> counting in binary. Gold. Uh, gold has 79 electrons. And it is arranged 2, 8, 18, 32, 18, and 1. So again, another good conductor. I, I heard somebody say once, I don't know if this is true. That silver was the better conductor, but it tarnishes so fast that that tarnish creates uh, resistance, and therefore it's not as where uh, gold doesn't tarnish. So that's where you get it. Um, copper, sorry. I don't know what aluminum would look like because it's not a um, <clears throat> element, but aluminum is should be on this list. Um, I just don't know what the the atoms would look like on that one. And the reason why I say aluminum is because, uh, you can look that up. Cool. Uh, during the 70s, I know homes, homes used aluminum wiring. It didn't work out so well. Um, there's some aircraft out there that use aluminum wiring because uh, aluminum's lighter and it saved weight and it's actually a pretty good conductor. Uh, problem with aluminum is the corrosion. Corrosion causes heat yeah and in homes it became a disaster because it would corrode next to the component that you know the switch or the outlet and that corrosion caused heat which then caused fire so aluminum wiring does have a problem that it's a, kind of a fire hazard oh yeah dissimilar metal corrosion yep absolutely and so yeah like in homes they want you to use a special grease and a special fitting to go to a copper wire that goes to the components crazy all right uh, so that's our conductors let's talk about insulators find out anything 13 Two, eight, and three? Mm -hmm. Cool. Write that down. If I only had a pen. Two, eight, three. Less than half the allowable? Yeah. Boom. There you go. Uh, insulator. Well, insulators have more than. That was more than more than one half of its valence electrons of its valence electrons oh I did I'm not going to do the 
makeup of it, but uh, we have glass, wood, plastics, rubber, and air. I think it's important to include air in that list because air is the standard uh, that they compare other insulators to. And in aircraft, especially magnetos, we air is part of the, uh, the function, uh, the insulating function of a magneto. Without the air in the magneto, you can't direct a spark to go from one component direct to another. It might go this way because there's nothing stopping it. If it goes that way, it's going to fire the wrong cylinder. So you need to have air in there. And in fact, the problem with magnetos is when you get to high altitudes and you start losing the air, they start doing that and they'll misfire and fire off the wrong cylinder and you can actually damage the engine or lose your power. So on aircraft, piston engine aircraft that fly at high altitudes, they pressurize them. They take air right off the turbo or, um, supercharger and blast it into there and pressurize the magneto just like you pressurize the cabin of an aircraft so because the air gets thinner and yep there's, there's not not enough there so you lost your insulating power um it d does not does not easily give off electrons like i said you put enough voltage behind something and you're going to move some electrons, which is this point. <laughs> At the point, the material gives off electrons. At the point, material gives off electrons or moves electrons. Electrons, it is said to break down. All right, one, two, last thing, because it says there are three types. They have the semiconductor. Does it conduct electricity? Eh, semi. And that's kind of the whole word right there. Eh, sort of. So it's in between. in between a conductor and, and insulator. Uh, two most common we'll talk about is germanium. Michael Jackson's brother, never gets old, and silicon. Apparently, each have four valence electrons. And if they each have four, I believe that would be the third shell to second shell. The second one has eight, right? I think that's second shell. So if it has four, is that more than half or less than half? Exactly half. But we'll come back around to semiconductors in uh, another couple weeks. All right, so there's your review on that one. Units of electricity. <laughs> it's waving me off. No, 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 don't call me. Units of electricity, all right. Should we start with current? Current. The symbol is I. Which stands for? Intensity. Thank you, stands for intensity. I'm not writing that. Uh, the conventional symbol for current is I, which may seem puzzling. It originates from the French phrase 
that um, word, but it starts with an I. Looks like in, in, it's I N T E N S I T E. So, so the French phrase. Oops, that'd be a capital F R E N F R E N S French phrase. See, but it's got the little thing on the E, so it makes it cool. Oh. C O U R A N T. No, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Intensity of the current. Uh -huh. Now it's like, ah, I get that. <laughs> Did you say for a song? <laughs> Measured in amps. amps. Named after Ampere. Ampere. Correct. Andre. It's got the thing on the E, so it's cool. So it's named after a person, therefore the A is capitalized. It is the flow, the flow of electrons through a conductor. Like water, I stole this from somebody. Like water moving across a water wheel. I, I can't do that. Like water flowing through a pipe. That makes more sense to me. Water flowing through a pipe. There you go. You want to measure the flow? There's your flow. One amp, so one amp, or ampere is the rate of flow of one coulomb per second of one coulomb per second. You're saying, what's a coulomb? I'm saying, I'm glad you asked. But the formula is ampere equals a coulomb Coulombs divided by seconds. And one Coulomb is equal to 6.28 times 10 to the 18th power of electrons. So if you want to count them, which is how I know this, because I did. But I did it by a minute and then divided by 60, so that's, you know, that's how I do things. Good. B, voltage. Hang on, do I want to move? No, I'm not going to move on. I'm going to back up just a little bit. And just, uh, not in my notes, but we're going to talk about this. So when we talk about amps, right, amps don't get that high, especially when you're using small devices. Flashlights resistors, little things like that. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to um, talk in terms of like 0. 0.00006 amps, right? Because that would get kind of tiresome. You know, it's fine if we have 5 amps or 10 or 15 or 20, you know, or 100 or 200. That makes sense. But because we deal, especially in this class, with such small amount of amperage, which is good, that means you're not going to die. We don't want to constantly talk about 0. 0.00006 amps, right? And that's where we come up with, with our prefixes. So one, two, three, that'd be 0. 0.06 milliamps. 
All right, and that's fine. Or because I said such a small number, we could then do it one more time and we could say one, two, three, four, five, six, which would be a zero right there. That'd be 60 micro amps. All right, so it's all the same thing and it's all how you want to look at it. But I just want to remind you that the, the M, the M right here is the same thing as saying times 10 to the negative third. And the, um, the mu right there, mu is times 10 to the negative six. And that's normally where we deal with in, in amps. It doesn't get a whole lot smaller than that, um, especially around for us. But just remember that, that, that that is shorthand for saying that. So I don't have a problem if it works better for you to put everything in amps. I mean, if you wanted to write 0. 0.00006 amps, if that's what works for you, I'll, I'll, I'll play along, right? Um, if uh, 0.06 uh, milli worked for you, I'll play along. Yeah. During lab, Millie actually told me to write it all out instead of doing micro, unless you're going to do, or milli, unless you're going to do milli for everything, like milliwatt, milli ohm, milli volt. Yeah, see, I don't do it that way. So, like for her, I think her brain works better that way. So, but with me, don't have to. You just tell her, I'll, I'll, I'll say, nah, I don't, you don't have to. Because it doesn't make sense then to put 600 millivolts for six volts. You'd be like, well, no, it's just six volts. So, it's, it's however you want to do it in your head. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. It's whatever, whatever works for you, but you just got to do it right. Okay. And again, this is one of those things where units of experience, I think, comes into play. So if you're one of those, um, see, sorry, my wife just landed at the airport, so I'm going to pick her up a little bit. So um, if you're one of those people that does something that I was thinking about, but don't remember because she's now bugging me. Um, <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. Somebody will, you know. Somebody. thinking like no amps and doing all yeah, yeah, if that works for you, just do it. Yeah, I have no problem. Sorry. No problem whatsoever. Oh, units of experience. Yeah, so you're, you're the type that wants to say 0 .006 uh, amps. You know what? That's fine because you're new at this. You're new at electricity. Hey, if you have to teach it, someday you'll be really good at converting back and forth. You may, you may never have to deal with it again. So, you know, just whatever. And after a while, then you'll be really good at converting it to something. So that, that's just totally fine. Do, do, it's better to be right than to do it a certain way because I said so. Yeah. Just do, get the right answer. Don't take liberties with that back there because I, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm not talking to him. You, you need to do what I tell you. <laughs> He's always looking for the scapegoat, loophole, that's the word. All right, uh, voltage. Voltage. I feel like I should go back and say something about it. You have to do it correctly, but it doesn't matter how you write the numbers down. Voltage. The symbol is? E. Why E? Stands for electromagnetic force. Electromotive force. I wrote down here, think electron moving force, but don't think that. I put that here, electro motive force. We end up with funny things like Mercedes. Why is it an E-class Mercedes, do you know? That is not. That is not at all the story I was going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you buy a C class, it's because 
the, then it was the E, the E class was the, this is my version. The E class was the first car to have fuel injection. And the German word for fuel injection began with an E, and therefore it was, I like mine better, sorry. It's, yeah, it's less, <laughs> less racist and classist. All right. As we continue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Measured in volts, named after Alessandro Volta. So it's got a big V because it's Volta. It is electrical pressure. Uh, also known as the difference of potential. And one volt will move one amp through one ohm. Through one ohm which is basically Ohm's law there. Which is to say one volt. I'm not gonna do it. One amp equals one ohm. All right, then we have the resistance. Could you give us like uh, a definition, uh, not a definition, but like an example of pressure, like <coughs> how we can think of that? Okay. I was purposely avoiding this. So I wouldn't screw it up. Visualize. <laughs> already said it. Because <laughs> sometimes it just goes, why are you talking about that? All right. Please. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something new and exciting. <coughs> this has pressure in it, right? Yes. It's got a little gauge right there. It's pressure. So believe it or not, that little gauge is representing two different things. That's to take two measurements, so to speak. You oh, can argue inside that I'm and outside. inside and outside. That's right. So if I were to, in theory then, take this room, seal it off, and pressurize it to the point where this outside pressure equal this inside pressure, then this gauge would say? Zero. Say zero. Nothing would be yeah, squeeze the button and nothing would happen. If I pressurize a little bit room a little bit more, I squeeze the button, the air goes into the bottle. See, I got off on something that doesn't matter. So, so voltage is the same way. It's comparing something to something. Just like that gauge is comparing inside pressure to the outside pressure. And so that's why we say it is the difference in potential difference between two things. That is why in, um, if you take a voltmeter and you put it on the same wire a few inches from each other, you get zero, even though there's 24 volts on it. So take my battery over here, which is a 12 volt battery. I know it's 12 volts because it has six holes on the top. And I put the positive and, and the negative right on here. I'm gonna get how many volts? There's 12 volts in this battery, so how many volts do I get right there? 12. Zero. I get zero, because I'm comparing this to this. This is the same, so there's no difference in potential. This is like the fire extinguisher. It's not inside outside, you're just taking inside inside. It, this is inside outside. So you have to have I hate to keep using the same word, difference of potential. It's got to be two, something different. You're seeing the difference between something. So like when you're measuring your circuit, you have your battery and a wire, and then you have the resistor, you're measuring what is the difference between the voltage on this side and that side. Or more appropriately, or the voltage drop, how much did you lose across that component. But same way, it is what is the voltage on this side versus that side, and the difference between the two. Does that help? Yes. Okay. 
just saying that so I showed up. All right, <laughs> resistance. Symbol is? R. Symbol is R. But it is, but what does the R stand for? Resistance. Resistance. Couldn't have just done that with the other ones. Um, oops, I'm done with that page. Right, moving on. Measured in? Ohms. Measured in ohms. Named after? George Simon Ohm. G E O R George Simon Ohm. Who would have thought it would have been more tied into the Greek letter Ohm? I don't know if it, it's like that. It sounds to me like I didn't really research this, but it's actually George Simon Ohm, and it just so happened to be he the guy that figured resistance. They said, well, let's just write the Greek symbol for Ohm. I don't know. Maybe he was a famous Greek, and that's how they came about. Never thought about that till now. All right, it restricts. Don't do it. Restricts the flow of current. It causes a drop in voltage. It can be thought of as electrical friction. All right, simple circuit. Uh, it must contain four items, and those items are one, two, three, four, power supply. Source of electrons. All right, what are my power supplies? What are my choices here? Battery. Generator. Wall outlet. He's not wrong. What what got it to the wall outlet? What does the water wheel turn? Water. A generator. A generator. <laughs> so we're down to two. So far I've got the battery and I've got the generator. Alternator. Alternator. What's the difference between a generator and an alternator? One's DC, one's AC. Nope. You're thinking a motor versus generator. So the difference between a generator and an alternator, so if you go back, old cars had generators, and then they put or old airplanes. Old airplanes had generators, and we upgraded alternators. So what's the big difference? Alternator stores power. No. The fields and the armature are reversed. Yeah. Wait, so uh, doesn't the alternator they are? convert AC into DC? What's that? Doesn't it convert AC into DC or something like that? Which one was it? Both of them. A generator produces AC that is rectified to DC mechanically. The commutator. The commutator. An <clears throat> alternator is well, it's built different on the inside, and they thought it through a little bit better, but it produces AC that is made into DC through diodes. So instead of mechanical, they use semiconductors, if you will, diodes, to, uh, to change it around. So. That's the big difference. So, all right, so we've had three, plus I heard nature, which would be? Solar. What's that? Lightning. Lightning. Yeah, it's, you have to catch it, though. So that's kind of hard. I was thinking photovoltaic cells. Solar power. Solar powder. Powered. But if we talk about wind, wind just moves a generator or a big alternator. So it's back to the same thing. So it's, what, four? Battery, generators, alternators. 
and uh, oh, photo, photovoltaic <laughs> cells. <laughs> Bio, okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I, I told you I worked on the antique planes. One of them, yeah, we just had to change the eels in the back sometime. It was just. <laughs> Yeah, it was like four four eels per volt, you know. So it's like you had 28 volt system. Yeah. All right, uh, power supply. Uh, what's next on the list? Conductor. Conductor. Okay, uh, something to move the electrons. So what are my conductors on an aircraft? Wires. Wires and the body, the airframe. No, don't 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 look at it like. It can be, yes, and sure, I guess you're, you're definitely not wrong, um, unless you're talking about um, an MG, because they use positive grounds. Now I'm getting off on something. But uh, <laughs> yes, it is technically the ground. But uh, What's a better way to look at it? Nah, you're fine. It's ground. It, it is. It's, it's the ground, ground portion. Well, that's the closest thing you want to get yeah. to the ground. Boy, uh, the let's see. Where the hell was it? Oh, what, what's next? Resistors. Okay, a load, load or resistors. Load is probably the better word. What happens if I don't have a load or a resistor in the circuit? Well, first of all, why would you do such a thing? I know why. My car was designed with the load resistors that don't do anything. It just makes the wire really hot. And then it blows heat, so that's the heater. But yeah, a load. So without a load, then why would you create the circuit? Um, that would make no sense. It's just a wire that goes from the battery to ground, and that is called a. Use the yeah, that is, well, it won't confuse them long because that's where the smoke comes from, because that wire is going to get real hot. Yeah, how many amps? All of them. Yeah, I started a decent, decent little wire fire. Um, when you get into our um, logic gates, we have a cool little logic gate board, which is, it's very analog, but it works um, with little switches, and inside it makes the lights do exactly what you, you know, these two, and makes the light go on. And you hook it up to a battery, and oh man, I was doing something, and I accidentally got the two wires on the battery touched, and man, I couldn't, it turned red hot that fast and started smoking. I'm like, well, shit, I'm not touching it now, man. <laughs> It, uh, yeah, okay, load. So power supply, a conductor, a load, and obviously path. path. Without no path, the electrons aren't going to go. So got to have those four things. All right, Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Yeah. So if you don't have no load, when the wire gets really hot, the Technically, yes, for a very brief time until it melts and falls apart. But, okay, let's think about practical applications because there are practical applications for that where they do just that. A heated windshield, the wire is just the load, but it's a resistance wire. It's designed to get hot. So it gets hot, heats the windshield. Yeah, yeah, certainly are. Um, why not? I was kind of going there with uh, an oven, like a, I don't know, you know, if you had a conventional oh, oven beer. or toaster, yeah. toaster, yeah, you know, in the galley. Cigar lighter. Cigar, yeah. <laughs> Cigar, Cigar lighter. lighter. <laughs> All right. Ohm's law. Let's see. Well, redundant, but whatever. Units of electricity. Volts, symbol E, amps, symbol I, resistance, R or the ohm, and power, which is the watt, named after James Watt. Interesting fella. And please do me a favor, when you are doing your, you work in lab and you draw a circuit and you know, you got your battery, 
You got a resistor. Please do it. E I R P in that order. <clears throat> one, 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 one. This would be E I R P of total. Total. Because when you do your convention in your own way, then I have to try and figure it out. It takes me longer to do it, and the line gets longer, and then I get frustrated. I'm like, ah, just do it right. So, all right, and the formula for power, power is pi, p equals i times e pi, peach pie, calder pie, pie a la mode. All right, Ohm's law proper. Ohm's law says the current, current, which is what? Measured in what? Okay, in an electrical circuit. is directly proportional to the EMF, which is also what? Voltage. Voltage. So before we move on, the current in an electrical circuit, amps in a circuit, is proportional to the EMF. So in other words, if the current goes up, the voltage goes up. If the voltage goes down, the current goes down because there's just not enough pushing it. And the inverse is true, which is to say, and inversely, which is what I just said. Um, oops, oh no, I didn't say that. Proportional. to the resistance. Which is to say that if resistance goes up, then the amperage goes down, inversely, backwards. If the voltage resistance goes down, then the current goes up. And the statement is one volt causes, I already wrote this, one amp to flow through one ohm. And let me see here. Oh, I don't have that picture. Nah, that's not what I was looking for. I wanted the uh, the Ohm's law wheel. You know what I'm talking about? Or I, yeah, because I don't really use it because it's got all those different formulas around it. But I find that I've got it in front of me here. But uh, it's just very difficult to deal with all of those formulas and trying to memorize them. And, and let's see, I'm not going to do it. Take forever to find it. All right, so. These are the formulas that I like to use, which is simply, and we already talked about this, E, I, and R. There we go. Which is to say that I equals E divided by R. E equals I times R. And R equals E divided by I. And I think you all see where that came from. Right, from the triangle. So if you can remember that, you are absolutely 100% good to go. Money. <clears throat> Plus pi, which really it's just P-I-E. I mean, the same thing, you can write that out like that and do the same thing. I equals P divided by E, E equals P divided by I, it works too. Let's talk about power. Power, power is con is measured in what? Watt. watt. The watt for power. 
I shouldn't write that P there because we can just write a W for watt, W watt. Makes more sense. All right, and uh, watt is P equals E, I'm not writing it that way, it's I times E because that spells pi. P equals I times E, I think I wrote this. It is equivalent to um, 0.00134 horsepower. We should do this. Um, one, one, one horsepower. Watt. One horsepower equals 746 watts. That makes more sense to me. I like that better. Oh, it's written right down below here. All I can do is read it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, one horsepower, 746 watts. It is the amount of energy, one horsepower, the amount of energy, E N E R G Y, energy to raise 550 pounds, 550 pounds, a distance. of one foot in one second. There's a kilogram conversion here, but I'm not going to do that. I don't have it in my notes, so I'll throw this one out real quick. Why I wrote this, I don't know, but if I don't do it, then I may hate myself on the dig. A jewel. Uh, when I drove ambulance and we had the defibrillator, it was in joules. And a joule is work done, work done by one watt in one second. Or approximately. Approximately 0 0.7376 foot pounds. Now, I'm not going to ask uh, Brandon about this one because he's going to come up with some Nazi story and I don't want to. <laughs> don't do it. But I did read this somewhere, I just didn't write down where it was, that this guy Watt was a very interesting person. And uh, well, he was the inventor of the steam engine, if I'm not mistaken. And so the thing is, he wanted to sell this engine to mining companies who were using horses, mules, what have you, um, English workhorse, I believe, to, to do this work. And so he wanted to sell them these steam engines. And you can't just sell, you got to do this equivalent. And so that's how he came up with the horsepower equals 746 watts and, his, and how much work that his engines could do would equal that many watts. And that's how they came up with the correlation between the two so he could sell these engines to the mining companies. So, all right, that is a good place to stop. So let's get out of here and I will go get my wife. Shoot down.